Today in our 2012 Toyota Sienna, we'll be installing the Airlift 1000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL60732. But before we do, we're gonna go ahead and test the manufacturer's suspension system. First, we'll go ahead and measure the manufacturer's ride height. This is 29 and 3 quarter inches. Next, we'll go ahead and install approximately 765 pounds into the rear of our vehicle, loading it down. Now our current ride height with the weight installed is 27 and a half inches. Now we'll go ahead and run the vehicle over our test course. As we go through the solemn course, the excessive weight allows for a lot of body roll and it will have a reduced steering response. As we go over our bumps course, it can be a bit rough with the excessive weight. Along with the body sag, we make it a good application for our new airlift system. Now we'll go ahead and install the airlift system. Now with our airlift system installed and our 765 pounds weight in the vehicle, aired up brings our new ride height to 28 inches. Now we'll go ahead and repeat our same test course. As we go back through the slalom course, with the airlift system installed, it really helps control the body roll and sway while bringing back our steering response. As we go over the bumps, it helps control it much better and it's not as shocking with the excessive weight. Now, to begin our install, we'll first go ahead and take the weight off the rear suspension. Now, with the rear coil springs extended, we'll take our airbag and roll it up, flatten it out as much as possible, and reinstall the cap to keep the suction on the bag. Now we can take the bag and feed it into the coil spring. Quick tech tip, as you put the coil spring in, pick the largest distance between coils to squeeze the bag in position, giving you enough room to work the airbag inside of the coil spring. Once we have the airbag in, we'll then go ahead and remove the plug from the nipple allowing air into the bag and it reforming to shape. Now with the driver's side airbag installed, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. Now with our airbag in, we're ready to start running our airline. I'll start on the driver's side. We'll feed the airline through the top of the coil spring mount into the coil spring. Then we'll install the spacer, which also help protect the airbag nipple. Next, we'll install the hose clamp onto the hose. Now, we can simply take the hose and feed it onto the nipple of the airbag, or a quick tech tip to make it easier, we can soak the line in some hot water, making it a little more pliable and easier to install. Once we have the hose pushed onto the nipple, we'll take the clamp and slide it down to the end of the hose, which will secure the hose to the airbag. Now we'll go ahead and route it towards the passenger side. Keep in mind when routing your hose to stay as far away from pinch points or excessive heat as possible. Now for this application, we'll have one inlet and exhaust line. So we'll use the T supplied with the install kit. We're gonna end the driver's side line here near the rear axle on the passenger side. We'll be using the airlift hose cutter, part number AL10530 to make sure we get a square clean cut on our hose. Now, once we've cut the driver's side line, we'll go ahead and route the passenger side. Again, we'll take our hose, feed it down to the top of the spring, install our spacer block, and install the line clamp. We'll go ahead and soak our hose in the hot water. And after approximately three to five minutes, we can go ahead and remove the hose and install it onto the nipple of the airbag on the passenger side. We'll move the spacer down over the top of the passenger side airbag, and then go ahead and continue routing our line. The passenger side hose will now route towards the driver's side where we ended the driver's side hose. Using our T, we'll go ahead and hold the lines together, mark the length of our hose, and go ahead and use our tubing cutter and cut off any excess length. Next, we'll go ahead and install a hose clamp onto the passenger side hose. We'll go ahead and take the T end, warm it with the water, and install it onto the T. 
Next, we'll take the driver's side hose and repeat the same process. Now we'll take the leftover line, install it into the third port of our T, as this will be the inflation and exhaust line that will run to the air valve. Once we have it installed on the T and the clamp in place, we'll go ahead and route the hose towards the rear of the vehicle on the passenger side. To assist in keeping our line up, secure, and out of the way, we'll be using the Redline Metal Loom Clamp, part number A0500, and a couple self-tapping screws. We'll go ahead and install our loom clamps now. Once we install the loom clamp and fastener into the frame, we'll go ahead and route the hose through the clamps. On the passenger side below the passenger side rear quarter panel is a manufacturer's grommet. We can remove the grommet and use our utility knife to cut a slice in the grommet that we can pass the hose through. Once we make the cut, we'll go ahead and push the hose through the grommet and up into the body of the vehicle. Now with all our hose routed and installed, we'll go ahead and use the zip ties provided with the install kit to secure our hose as necessary, being careful not to over tighten it and crush the hose. Then we'll go ahead and cut off any excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. Next, we'll need to install the heat shield here on the passenger side to prevent the hot exhaust from doing any damage to the airbag or line. The heat shield is bendable so that we can customize it to go around the bend here of the tailpipe. We'll go ahead and set our heat shield in position and then bend the mounting tabs as necessary. Once we have it formed as necessary, we'll go ahead and take the clamps, put them onto the pipe and tighten them down a bit to take up some of the excess slack. This will make it easier to install onto the heat shield and tighten it down. Now with both clamps in position, we'll go ahead and set our heat shield back into place and install the clamps over the mounting tabs. Now we can tighten down the clamps. Then we'll go ahead and cut off any excess to clean up our install look. Now with our heat shield secured, we're ready to move inside the vehicle. As you can see, our hose is already in the inner quarter panel here. We'll go ahead and route it out of the jack storage compartment. Here we'll go ahead and remove the vehicle's spare tire jack and tool and bracket. Now to mount the inflation valve, we're gonna use a tow ready mounting bracket part number 18140 and modify it to our need. We'll go ahead and take the bracket and we'll pre-drill our inflation valve attachment point and enlarge it to the 5 16 Now with that done, we'll then go ahead and take the bracket and turn it over and pre-drill our two attachment points. Once we pre-drill attachment points, we'll use the self-tapping screws to secure the bracket directly to the body lip just above the frame here on the passenger side. Now with our bracket secured, we'll go ahead and take our hose, bring it up to the bracket, measure for our length, and cut it as necessary. Once again, we'll slide the clamp onto the hose, warm the hose in the hot water, and then install the hose on the back of the inflation valve. To secure the inflation valve to our bracket, we'll install a nut and star washer, put the inflation valve through the bracket, and secure it with a rubber flat washer, metal washer, and then a nut. Now with the inflation valve secured, we can go ahead and reinstall our jack bracket, jack, and tools. We're now ready to test our new airlift system. To test the system, we'll go ahead and put supply air to the inflation valve, airing it up. We'll check our pressure, and once we have ample pressure, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of our Airlift 1000 Air Helper Springs, part number AL60732, on our 2012 Toyota Sienna.